Okay, this will be the last shot uh, of the GT setup, and uh, we'll see how it goes from here. We're going to start removing the parts and switching over to 93 saline wing with the Cobra bumper. Okay, to take the back of the GT apart, the first thing you want to do, uh, I'm going to be painting, so uh, I'm going to be removing the tail lights out and stuff. Start by removing the parts like this. You have one here and here. And once you get this, this, and you have two more on the inside here you want to undo. And that will allow us to get to the bolts on the back side of the tail lights. Once we remove those screws that I showed you, you got one on here, one in the panel, two across the top, and you just remove the panel, which allows you to get to the nuts that hold the fog lights, or the fog lights, the tail lights in. Once you remove the six seven sixteenths nuts, your tail light should come free. And yeah, those are my bulbs, they're LED, but you'll have standard bulbs. I have LED bulbs. I changed mine out. When you get it out, it should look something like that. Okay, we've now removed all the tail lights and license plate. Uh, the reasoning why is I'm going to pull this GT bumper off and uh, put a 93 Cobra bumper on. I'm going to be painting it on the car. Not really to my choice, but I want to make sure fitment is perfect before I go painting it. Um, if you don't have an extra set of hands when you're putting this on and you pre-paint the bumper, nine times out of ten you end up scratching it or whatever. I don't want to take any chances and have a fitment problem or something I have to grind or modify later. Uh, so this is how we're going to do it. And uh, I'll just tape off the car really well and spray the bumper right on the car so I know fitment's right. To remove the Cobra bumper, we have to access a few of the 7 16th nuts, I believe they are. I haven't checked it yet. Um, okay, believe it or not, there's not a lot that holds these GT bumpers on. The rumor always had it that it was tons of bolts and nuts. There's not a lot of bolts and nuts. Uh, basically, right underneath you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 I guess they're 7 16ths. I haven't checked them, like I said. Um, take those off. That's going to that's gonna undo the top. Side view inside your wheel opening molding. And you're going to have two screws right here. And I believe there's one behind here and a clip that holds in here. I'm going to get under there and see about that. But uh, like I said, it's my first time taking a GT bumper off. Uh, never had to take one off a GT, so... It's not as bad as it, it sounds. A lot of people are saying, oh my god, it's going to take forever to get it now. It looks like it's going pretty well, but I'll keep you updated as we go. Okay, once you've taken out those four nuts that I told you about going across the back, at the top, there's going to be one on each side in the corner that are also 5 sixteenths. They're down in the corner valley in there. Take those off. So you'll have four across the back, one on each side. Underneath, after you've removed your top four on the inside and the one on each side, underneath, let's see if you can see this. Underneath, you have two areas on each side. You got two here and two over on the passenger side to remove. And then the next part's not actually uh, something you have to do. I jacked up the car. Okay, here's just a recap of what's going on. I take everything I said back about easy coming off. Well, it's not that difficult, but it's just time consuming. And over on the gas tank side, you've got your uh, the gas tank filler tube. If you can see that in there, that's in the way of everything you're trying to do. Your side panels. To take these off, you've got two underneath and the inside, which I've already showed you. You've got three along the top, and then you've got the two that hole into the wheel opening molding. Now I remove the wheel just so that you can uh, get to it easily. 
The bumpers deattached all the way across. Those were those nuts on the inside. There's four, one on each side. Same thing over here as we did on the uh, passenger side. And then last but not least, if you're replacing a GT bumper, you know, because yours is sagging or whatever, you'll take this apart differently. If you go into the Cobra bumper, you're going to have to do one modification under here. <coughs> this bracket right here is supported only for GT. Now, if you're going to replace the GT, you'll put a screwdriver in here and pop these three clips. We have to drill this out and the other side out so that this bracket comes off with it because the Cobra uh, rear pad does not require this. So, that's where we are so far. Well, it was a long battle, but it's on. This is the Cobra bumper. Just letting it dry right now. It's got no tail lights in it. I still got to change out the wing. It'll be a saline wing. And it's all done right now. The paint's still wet. When you're doing these bumpers, boy, I'll tell you, when they're brand new parts even, you better sand them good because uh, I sanded it down, put a etching primer on there to etch into the plastic, and it still didn't stick. So I ended up sanding the whole thing, yes, with 180. And I don't believe in sanding plastic with 180, but sanded it with 180, primed it again, and scuffed it down. I didn't think it would work, but uh, it'll definitely bond to there now. So that's it for now. Here's a small video of the wing that we repaired, the saline wing. See if you can see, if you can get a glare on it so that you can see there. So you can see the shine on it, because white's hard to see shine on film. So I'm just kind of running a flashlight down it so you can see the shine. It came out really good. Well, my camera is blurry, but it's got a good gloss to it. I don't know if you can see my reflection in there. It's got a good gloss, came out really good. Uh, thanks to Finish Master and Jeff Urban, came out really good.